A lot of you have expressed concern regarding my health recently, so uh, my promise to you, the Munga Tuesday community, I will not eat a single morsel of food until Norm MacDonald is dead and buried. Uh, he died last Tuesday. <laughs> Hi, I'm Darcy, and this is Manga Tuesday 84, and today we will be re-reviewing Norm MacDonald. Um, for the folks of you at home who don't know, Norm MacDonald has died. And when I found out the news, me, along with millions of Norm fans worldwide, all collectively, we said, I didn't even know he was sick. And genuinely, it appears nobody did know he was sick. It's not even clear if his family knew. They may have, but... Uh, it's not really clear, but apparently he's been uh, battling cancer for the better part of nine years. I think it was nine years, but that's quite a long time. I've been a big fan of Norm's for quite a few years now. I can't remember exactly when exactly I become a fan, but I remember the first thing I ever saw of his was a, a bit from uh, Weekend Update. Uh, it's a pretty popular one. It was the... Uh, <laughs> Women versus male drivers, the percentages. I won't bother explaining it or telling the joke. That There's a good chance you've probably seen it. If you haven't, then this is my message to you to go watch it and find it and watch as many as Norm clips as you can. But as soon as I saw it, I was like, yeah, this is hilarious. The twists, the turns, the deliveries. Who the H is this guy? And I looked into it and that guy was Norm MacDonald. And from there, I would just continue to seek out and explore and find better and more epic norm hilari hila hilarious clips and if you're not familiar with norm a good place to start is the youtube channel i'm not norm has a lot of clips and montages and compilations that you can consume so yeah norm immediately became my favorite stand-up comedian by far not that i'm a massive connoisseur of stand-up comedians i'm not some super stand-up comedy you know fan super fan nerd that i basically what i'm saying is if you ask me to name my top five stand-up comedians uh, I might have to start pulling out uh, Daniel Tosh and Jerry Seinfeld. The thing, I'm not listen. I would not consider myself a big fan of stand-up comedy as a whole. I would consider myself a big fan of Norm Macdonald. I remember I had thought about it a few times, sort of recently-ish, and I sort of come to the conclusion idea that Norm is probably one of the only very few celebrity figures that I would actually would have liked to meet. Or at the very least, see one of his stand-up sets or something. But uh, that won't be happening now, unless all his friends are working together right now on a way to revive him. And even then, they would have to be successful in that mission, so it's you know, probably unlikely. Let's talk about the book. First of all, one of the opening quotes in the book. The opening pages of the book has three quotes, and the third of the quotes is uh, interesting to ponder on now. Uh, I know of only two very real evils in life, remorse and illness, Leo Tulsi, War and Peace. And this book came out in, you know, uh, 2016 by the looks of it, so right in the middle of uh, him having cancer to none of our knowledge. But the book itself, if you haven't read it, uh, it's, uh, dare I say, a masterpiece. Uh, perhaps I'm overstating it, but I don't think I'm overstating it all. It's actually a really clever and interesting book. And the most important part, it's funny. He, Norm, was a funny man, after all. That was his the vocation, his occupation, his way of life, his profession. He was a professional funny man, and this book has funny in spades. My copy has been water damaged. I talked about that on the um, on the other, my original Norm review. I didn't get the, I regret not getting a hardcover version. I still want to try and get one at some point. But I think when I bought the paperback, the hardcover was still in stock, in print. But I just chose to get the paperback because I was like, it's cheaper at the moment. I don't want to spend too much money. 
maybe I'll get the hardcover, you know, later on, and then later on come, not long after I bought and read this, then the hardcover wasn't available, uh, but it was still available for a pretty reasonable price on the second-hand market, but I didn't jump on it. I was like, oh, I'll get around to it eventually. Maybe they'll reprint it, actually, so I can get a brand new one. And they didn't reprint it. And then even recently, like I, some, some months ago, like maybe earlier this year, I was looking, and it was still pretty reasonably priced, like around $30, $40 I could get it, a second-hand hardcover version. Uh, and I still haven't got it. And then recently I looked, and the prices were a lot higher... Um, there was still some I was seeing that were popping up around maybe the $50 mark-ish, so... Basically, I really want to get a hardcover version of this, and I've got to keep my eyes peeled. Hopefully, they really should, uh, fucking reprint it. I mean, I think maybe even the paperback version is, like, out of print most places now, and I mean... Yeah, if you haven't read this book, and you are a fan of Norm, then definitely you should read it, and if you're stupid and you... You're like, I hate reading, I refuse to read. There is an audiobook version, which I have not heard, but there's an audiobook version that Norm narrates himself, so you might like that. But I would recommend just reading it, because if you're familiar at all with Norm, you'll be, you'll be able to hear him in your own head, the, his, the way, his vernacular and his, uh, the way he speaks is, is very apparent in the writings and it really adds to it all there's some parts of the book I, that would be a little bit weird uh in audiobook form i think i think it's it's the perfect book it makes full use of the fact that it is a book i remember i thought i, I remember hearing like talks about uh, a movie version of something which would have been interesting but also uh, would have like if you've read the book you would know that well how would that exactly work it would have to be altered a bit to make it work, you know. I also remember potentially seeing something a, a while back about Norm potentially wanting to write another book and that he, maybe he had talked about potentially writing a book and not releasing it under the Norm name, releasing it under some unknown pseudonym and not telling anyone and just, you know, putting it out there. Which makes me wonder if that was even true unless I'm misremembering or someone was misquoting him. But if he did say something along those lines or allude to that, I wonder if he ever did put out a book and maybe it's there's a book out there sitting there waiting to be found and discovered. Or maybe at the very least, maybe he was working on a book in his own time and maybe the, uh, maybe it was unfinished, but maybe it'll someday see the light of day. This might be a kind of long episode because I'll probably just ramble about a bunch of different things. Um, but, you know... It's, uh, it's an important episode, so fuck you, get over it. It's interesting to me that Norm truly was, through and through, was a stand-up comedian. That was what he loved, and that was his passion, and that was really what he did in focus. He didn't branch out to many other things, but he at the same time he did, and almost, in a lot of ways, the few things he did branch out to are almost the things he's most known for. He stint on Saturday Night Live with Weekend Update, uh, his podcast, Norm MacDonald Live, this book, his litany of talk show uh, appearances and whatnot are some of the most beloved Norm moments. Since his passing, you see a lot of people saying, if you don't know Norm, you just go watch. But they won't. They don't say go watch the, this Norm special or that Norm special. They say go watch clips of Norm, you know. Yeah, so much just little bites I've seen from short talk show appearances or, or from the podcast that is fucking phenomenal and is loved by so many people. For a guy that was so passionate for stand-up and was so just a was a stand-up comedian through and through, his stand-up often almost, you know, his pure just stand-up and <laughs> do comedy as stand-up specials or whatnot are somewhat overlooked. I mean, this is a guy for the past 10 years has still been, even when dealing with his sickness that no one knew about, has been going to comedy clubs and just doing stand-up sets. I don't know how frequently, perhaps in the last few years, maybe he's slown up, but I, I'm sort of just rambling with no point. But the point I did kind of want to get to is probably my favorite stand-up special of sorts of his, uh, and one of his oldest ones from, uh, it's from 1991. It was a HBO TV special, uh, One Night Stand, Norm MacDonald. It's a 20 to 25 minute uh, stand-up set. And with a short little skit book ending, the start and the end. So it's about like 22, 23 minutes of just pure stand-up. And 
I think the material is excellent. There were so many great jokes, you know, the the dating game and the popsicle, the lottery ticket, the wiener dog, his father's big head poking around the corner, the um, driving in the back seat. I could go on and on. It, 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 it's just, it's just so funny, man. I think it's a hidden gem. It's not something that I see pop up a mu much in the I'm Not Norm compilations, um, but it's, it's something that we can find on YouTube in full, and I would once again, if you haven't seen that, I would very much recommend you checking it out. It's got phenomenal jokes. It's just... I mean, that's basically the, the Norm MacDonald story, all these things. It's, uh, the, the, be the only thing I can say, the most important thing that I can say about all this stuff is... It's hilarious, and at the end of the day, when your job is to be funny, when what you do is comedy, really all that needs to be said is, all you can hope for is that it's funny, and his stuff is more than funny, it's hilarious, so what more can I say? Well, I could say a lot more, probably, if I was a little more eloquent with my words, but I'm not, so... Uh, but you know who is eloquent with the words? Norm MacDonald, so... Another one of my favourite Norm things or Norm moments is his appearance on Letterman, his last appearance on Letterman. It's when Letterman was coming to a close and I don't think it was the very last show but it was one of the last few shows and it was Norm's last appearance on Letterman. And he did a stand-up uh, set, uh, he did a stand-up for 10 minutes, just a short, a tight 10 minutes. And I think that set is it's really tight and really color you surprised. It's really hilarious. A lot of the material in that Letterman set from I think 2015, he later expands on in uh, his 2017 special, Hitler's Dog. But I think for a lot of the jokes, the uh, the the tightness and the brevity of the Letterman. Uh, uh, version almost hits a little harder f for a lot of the stuff and is works just as well even better you know and in that letterman said it's one of the rare moments where we see norm almost um break in a sense he gets a little emotional um and a little sentimental uh, towards the end as he talks about his favorite letterman joke and then as he sort of uh tells letterman that he loves him and he starts almost uh, you know gets a little choked up and a little teary-eyed and he uh even you know years ago when i first saw that myself watching it, you know, i would get a little teary-eyed almost and i think um I, i've watched it again once in full since i heard the news of his passing and it was a little more teary-eyed than usual I got watching it and that and that'll be one of the ones I think I go back to a lot and when I do watch it it'll you know it's uh, it's hard not to get emotional watching um, the final moments of that set especially considering the fact that he was going through the cancer there he was you know three or four or so years into the battle and he's going into this set and it clearly meant a lot to him and um yeah it's it's a hilarious a short 10 minute hilarious set with an emotional ending that packs an even deeper punch now that he's uh dead um about maybe a year ago or so adam egret was on the uh, Joe Rogan podcast, and he talked about on that, about bringing the Norm podcast back with Norm. That was the Norm MacDonald Live, by the way. It was a podcast with Norm and his trusty sidekick, Adam Egret. And Adam talked to Joe about that they were looking at or planning to potentially bring the podcast back, do more episodes soonish, and that never happened, unfortunately. And I wonder perhaps if that was because of Norm's illness perhaps uh, getting worse or taking a, a larger toll out of him. Or maybe a Adam was just being a dirty, rotten liar talking out of his ass. I don't know. For me personally, 
you know, I say I'm a big Norm fan, and I've watched so many Norm clips, and I've watched his stand-up specials, full-length stuff, and there's so much, but yet, there's still so much more for me to discover, I mean, because who knows how many talk show appearances and radio show stuff that he appeared on that Nor I'm Not Norm hasn't made a, a video on yet, but also, even, for example, something like Dirty Work, which was the movie he was in, you know, you might have heard of it, I still haven't seen Dirty Work, I've been meaning to watch Dirty Work for ages, Whenever I've gone to uh, um, try and find it, you know, pirate it, as the kids say, I, I had trouble and couldn't get it. I was like, ah, I'll do it later. And I just, I still haven't done it. So I still, as a massive Norm fan, has not watched Dirty Work. I know that is blasphemy, it is heresy. In fact, I will go and buy it. Well, yes, I'll, I'll buy it. Why would I buy it now? But Norm's dead and he's not going to get any of the money from it. Well, maybe his family will. They probably won't. It probably all goes to some greedy fucking studio. I want to buy it or something. I'm just going to get the movie. I'm going to actually watch the movie within the next few days. Before next Tuesday. But, but, but regardless, the point is, there is so much Norm left for me to discover. Um, so, uh, that's something I'm going to look forward to. And for the rest of my life... I will be, you know, discovering new Norm clips. And I guess eventually maybe I will run out. But then I will spend the rest of my days re-watching old clips. Because they are truly timeless, so many of them. Speaking of dirty work. Shocking twist. Irony, fate of life. Somehow, Artie Lang managed to outlive Norm. So, that's... That's a fun fact. He also often talked about death, both seriously and comedically within jokes, both before and after when he would have found out he had cancer. But um, it's interesting to listen to, and I always enjoyed his insight, and I too often pondered death and fear my own perceived mortality. And, you know, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and, and say it. Death is scary. Anyways, if you've never heard of Norm or you never heard any of Norm's uh, comedy, oh, uh, oh, another great Norm moment is him on that fucking YouTube award thing with the acid-tongued Arab and all the hijinks he got up to there. All the stars are out that night. That's just another thing. Uh, the, listen, there's so many Norm things that I could mention. He, one of his appearances on Conan when, uh, with his wife, the battle axe of the dirty dog, and uh, he's been talking about Oscar Pistorius. There's so much shit. Basically, every e single episode of Norm MacDonald Live, buying maybe a few weaker episodes, they're all just filled chock brim with phenomenal content. But anyway, the point is, if you don't know who Norm is, or you've never heard, or you haven't heard much of his stuff, I probably haven't done a very good job to convince you because I could not put into words Norm's true genius. I am too much of a barker. But he is funny and hilarious and insightful. And you guessed it, Frank Stallone. And I think... In honour of Norm's life, we should all come together and agree that we should throw OJ back in prison. For Norm. For Norm. There's so much more that I could say about Norm, but I'm not very good at saying things. So I won't ramble on any longer. I'll just give Norm a 10 out of 10. And I'll say that after 9 years of battling cancer, in the end... Norm tied his battle with cancer. And I know we talk a lot of shit here and act like a fucking clown a lot of the times. I know that I often have no truck for the sentimental. But if something is true, it is not sentimental. So I say in truth, we, we're going to miss you, Norm. So whether you're... A, big fan or a little fan or you've never heard of him i urge all of you to go watch as many norm clips as you can consume in as short as time as possible and uh i'll say thanks for watching and as always 
Happy early birthday, Jesus. I hope you don't mind getting an old chunk of coal. <laughs> I'm just an old chunk of coal But I'm gonna be a dime on someday I'm gonna grow and glow till I'm so plump, pure, perfect I'm gonna put a smile on everybody's face I'm gonna kneel and pray every day Lest I should become vain along the way I'm just an old chunk of coal now, Lord But I'm gonna be a diamond someday Gonna search and find a better way to walk I'm gonna spit and polish my old rough egg self Till I get rid of every single flaw I'm gonna be the world's best friend I'm gonna go around shaking everybody's hand I'm gonna be the cotton-picking rage of the age I'm gonna be a diamond someday I'm gonna be the cotton pick and rage of the age I'm gonna be a diamond someday My uh, wife went into a coma Oh, sorry to hear that and uh, the doctor said uh, to me, you won't hear this from any 1935 comic. <laughs> he says to me, there's one way to wake her up, but it's a little unconventional. You go in there and you have oral sex with her. I said, by God. <laughs> he says, I've seen it work. I said, well, I'm willing to try. <laughs> so I go in there, I'm in there about five minutes, and I come out. I said, doc, she's choking. 